Thank you for watching today's special edition of Beyond Markets where we are discussing the impact that agriculture can potentially make in speeding up Africa's economic development goals. Our guest is Johan van Sel, CEO of uh, Sunlam. Why him? He is an agronomist and he has worked at the World Bank. He has actually got a PhD in agricultural economics. That's why we are talking not about financials today, we're just talking about agriculture and the lay of the land, so to speak. Now, before we took the break, uh, Johan, so we spoke about what generally African governments can do. Now, we have seen at the level of the African Union, they have set up an infrastructure structure, which is chaired by President Jacob Zuma. Given the importance of agriculture and given also the importance of infrastructure in terms of getting agriculture working, do you think it would make sense for the AU to look at agriculture as that kind of opportunity at that kind of level? Yes, definitely. I would even go so far as to say within the in broader infrastructure fund there should be earmarked funding particularly for uh, infrastructure for agriculture. Yeah. How would it work in your view? Well, I, I think you can ring fence part of the bigger pool of money yeah. to be invested. And often agriculture also builds on, on roads and so forth. So yeah. if you, you know mining areas and so which which is relatively easy to fund in infrastructure, you know, once you put up infrastructure at relatively small marginal and an additional cost, you yeah. can you you can add feeder roads or you can open up areas, you yeah. can build a dam for instance and not only use the dam for, f you know, the mining activity, but yeah. also make it a bit bigger and use it then for agriculture. Yeah. So these are the kinds of opportunities, and they, they abound in Africa. How do we bring in private money into the whole equation? Because that's one part of the puzzle, isn't it? Because we do know that governments are constrained for finance. I mean, almost yes. everybody is running large budget deficits, with the exception of a few, even Botswana mm -hmm. in recent years has fallen onto hard times. So we need private money into the whole yes. equation. But with it comes other sensitivities, in part those that we touched in the first yes. half. Well, private, if, if you do it over and above what's happening anyway, it can only be a win-win situation. So you're not taking away from anything else, you're just yeah. adding to that. But private money usually follows incentives. If people can make, get a return. Yeah. So that's why we're all in the business, you know. Sure. I mean, we manage a lot of, a lot of other people's money, but uh, I'll lose my job immediately if I put it into just social projects or grants or sure. things like that. I have to get a return that's consumerate with uh, the risks that we take. And agriculture is fairly, fairly risky and yeah. it's long-term money. So the return has to be, you know, uh, to reflect that. And uh, what we've seen often, the thinking was, well, agriculture can't give you that return. We've yeah. seen though that in, if you invest in particularly processing and even the major farming activities, you can do pretty well. Is it possible to get private money to make a fair return in agriculture without upsetting the politicians? Yes, I mean, uh, I take the example in South Africa. We've started in 1994, a big development fund with about four or five billion rands in it, where if I look at the returns, and we've invested mainly in South Africa into yeah. developmental type of things. Right. Uh, we've had returns that are certainly as high as that we've made by investing in stock exchanges. So even within that so developmental s that state, exactly you can that. make a fair exactly return. That. And if you look today, we run a big fund. We, we not only put our own money in, yeah. but we've uh, raised funny money from you know a whole number of investors. Yeah. Where we get what I believe is superior returns for people, better than what we get elsewhere, but by investing in agriculture. Absolutely. Let's talk about what Sunlam is doing, because you're a big player. You said earlier that you are in about 15 countries where you are active. Talk to us about what you have done so far, and in what areas. Well, the issue is I would have liked to do more, but yeah. you know... Uh, you work not, within the constraints you, you have. We always use, work within the constraints. Yeah. But we, we essentially tackle the issue from two areas. Uh, the one area is of from the money-making perspective. This is really where we uh, see some opportunities. We run a fund, the, the Agri-V fund, uh, that we raised and so forth. It's close to a billion, billion rands at this moment in time. Uh, that we put together and uh, the money is all invested now in great projects. Where is that active? It's active in, in most of sub-Saharan Africa um, and uh, uh, we're just touching on a number of things but right. it's, it's sort of a, a first effort to see you yeah. know in the future what we can And do. how has been that exercise? What have you found out? Well we found out that there are substantial opportunity to make 
better returns than what we're making through simply investing in other people's companies. Yeah, which is interesting because you've got a lot of money on your balance sheet. And when I was coming yes. in, one of our reporters, Samantha Loring, came to me and said, you need to ask him about what he's doing with that money that he has on that balance sheet. Well, firstly, it's not Sanam's money, it's our clients' <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> that they you oversee. Us, they want us to be accountable. That you oversee, yeah. It. Yeah, and therefore, I mean, we have to get proper returns, and uh, we can't go and betting and, uh, you know, sure. uh, spending on other frivolous things. But we're, we're a long-term player, and mm. uh, a lot of the money that we have is not short-term. Our liabilities are, you know, paying pensions to people 20 and 30 and 40 years from now, yeah. or annuities. So a lot of that money has to be, you know, matched, and therefore it has to be invested in longer term projects, yeah. like infrastructure is a great area for us, sure. but also things like agriculture, where the return is not quick. Yeah. You can't, you know, just, you know, particularly if you go to perennial crops and other areas. Yeah. So these are areas that, that we exploit, and uh, we see tremendous opportunity there, particularly, you know, where the infrastructure is, the roads are there, or yeah. the waterways, yeah. and you can tap the international markets in particular. Yeah. Now, so you've got a billion now at the moment. Are there plans to increase that's the size of that fund? Yes. Uh, as, as I've said, this was a first effort uh, about yeah. two years ago that we started three years ago to see what can be done. Yeah. And uh, we were amazed at the opportunities available to get proper returns on that. And uh, we think we'll be partnering on that. In addition to that, in the different countries that we operate, we, we also control a, a big chunk of savings in those countries. Right. And there we often partner, particularly with foreign players who would like to invest uh, in, in agriculture and uh, for their own market. So yeah. we do a lot of production on the African continent, create the jobs, create the whole environment. Yeah. And a lot of the high value, then uh, half of the the stuff then usually gets exported, yeah. like the particularly on the fruit crops and the high value stuff, nuts yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Now, when we were going into these countries, how difficult was it for you to find those opportunities? And were they particular countries where it was easy? You walked in, you talked to the authorities, or you don't even need to talk to the authorities. You talk to the private sector players, uh, get into concert with them, and get it going. Yes, in, in many cases there are already private sector uh, players going. Yeah. Uh, in other in, in, in other places, particularly in places like Zambia, as I've said, Tanzania, mm -hmm. it's fairly easy to engage with the politicians. Uh, a big chunk of the people within those countries are still rurally based. They mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. jobs there, and therefore they make the land available fairly easily yeah. as long as you bring the other stuff. Did and you look uh, very hard? Did you have to look very hard? No, it's not. Uh, the opportunities abound at this moment in time. Uh, as more money start flowing into Africa, you know, when we started that, we were the first, one of the first players. Yeah. There are now many. I mean, there are now, I can name five, six, fun six funds. That are active within the agriculture space. So suddenly, you know, Africa is opening up. Yeah. And it tells you that people see the opportunities and they're investing. As long as they're investing, yeah. um, you know, the returns are, are, are fine. The, you'll have to start worrying when, when investments stop. Yeah, but agriculture, or let me call it farming, is extremely volatile. I mean, we've seen what has been happening with climate change, yes. uh, rain patterns changing, prices plummeting, surging, soaring, and yes. all, all over the place. How do you then ensure that your fair return is protected while at the same time not disrupting the work that you're doing on the ground? Well, there's, of course, we look at, uh, it's not only uh, the, the land as the resource and yeah. such, but water is as important. And in, in, in future, we think probably will be more important. The areas that are really developed are those, you know, where you have uh, uh, a stable water supply, either a good river system yeah. or some sort of a dam. And, and that's the areas, you know, where you can make big investments. Or where there are a big number of outgrowers where you can put up a processing plant. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, you don't put the capacity as just to match what the availability is, sure. but you sort of to try to take, make sure that there's 50% or even a bit more of additional surplus capacity. So yeah. around these things, you can provide a lot. And often, uh, you know, on the processing side, a, a mill or something 
creates wonders. Yeah. I've got four things that we need to get through quickly now because we've got three minutes yes. of the show left. One of them is land tenure and the kind yes. of model that would be appropriate to make sure that, you know, that balance between rural and commercialization is protected. Then secondly, I want us also to talk about uh, the, 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 uh, the future of agriculture and how it looks. Is it commercial? Is it uh, the, the, the small scale, uh, smallholder farmer? Mm. Well, the first thing, tenure. I mean, yeah. no matter whether you have land ownership or you or it's, it's tribal land or whatever, you have to have security of tenure. Yeah. If there's no security of tenure, you, you have a problem because then people simply don't invest in mm. that land because they may lose it. Uh, it's better if you can raise money against the land as an asset. Right. And that you get with security of tenure and it works better if there's ownership, but ownership is not the only way in which to do that. There yeah. are many other models mm -hmm. that can only work well, yeah. also work well. On the farm size issue, yeah. uh, economies of scale and so forth, it is important with what there is. You create more jobs on smaller farms. This is very simple. It depends on what you want to do. Uh, larger farms are less jobs, but you get big volumes that can get a processing plant to work. What we've seen across the world is you, you have a few big farms you set up processing yeah. and then you have outgrowers that also serve small, smaller farmers around them. And these mixed systems often produce the best results. And we look at a crystal ball, what will those farms look like, I don't know, 50 years now? There is no single recipe. In, in a number of years we'll see big farms supported by uh, and surrounded by a whole r a number of uh, small players. But Africa will become a powerhouse in food production in the world.